looking for something out of the ordinary evening entertainment, the virgin was getting to the entire thing in the world. Another venue of note is the man out of Massachusetts, 
We have a great event tonight featuring Elvis Pilot and Bruce Strickrod, who's going to give us an explorer's eye on the deep sea. Now, you will have plenty of time to talk with Bruce and ask questions. He's going to present for about 30 minutes, and then we will open it up for questions. If you are joining us on Facebook, just at any point put in your question, and we have our Autumn Brown, our social media specialist, who will make sure to ask that question for you. We update the designs on a regular basis, and that's what we did in 2000. Let me kind of sneak over for you. Everyone's glued to the window. It's not even part of your science. It's just that. You're kind of like, this is amazing. Look at that. It's really cool. We pass through colors between zero and 150 meters that you cannot describe because we'll never see them anywhere else. We'll pass through a color of aquamarine that if it was, you could put it on a gem, you felt a crazy, it's amazing green. We pass through a color of blue that is phenomenal. It's all because the light gets attenuated as it goes through the water. And you just can't find that color anywhere else. And you can't even describe it. You just see it. The water's really clear, and you're like, quick, look out the window. And then lunch is quite elegant. Peanut butter and jelly. Every day, except for when they have people who have peanut allergies, which is always good to tell me. <laughs> happens. Candy bar, an apple or an orange. Everyone's glued to them. Put the prep work every day. And off we are at 8 o'clock. We try to do this like clockwork so we can get as much time on the bottom as possible. So 8 a.m. we're in the water. Five minutes later, assuming everything checks out, we're on our way down. And like I said, five minutes later, you can't even see any light. All right, so we're going to start this up. I hope you can over an hour and a half get into the view. And I took some of the video, and I put it together real quick. And I hope you can see this. If you can't see it, um, I'll probably share it with you to find a way to put it online. But it's a really good way to see if you were a fish down there looking or an octopus looking at the sub, this is what you'd see. We're about two meters off the bottom here. down, here's the modern way of doing it. And believe us, it's a very graceful way. You can put a tin hat on it if you like and go exploring the vasty deep. But even that's only really playing at going down. We want to consider for a moment the men who do it for a living. In fact, for divers' reasons. <laughs> As long ago as 1720, astronomer Halley invented a diving bell that could go down to 10 fathoms. Air was stored in a barrel and fed through a leather tube, and another tube brought air to the diver who wore a helmet of skin. About 100 years ago, a much more tactical dress was introduced, and the same principle is employed today. The diagram shows how the dress was constructed, though improvements have been made from time to time. Limit your motion as you can only do the breaststrokes. Number three, 
so kind to him. And how far can we go without a big submersible to protect us? What's the lowest depth humans can survive? I'm Stu, this is the bunk, where we talk the truth in the myth, and the facts in the misconception. But before we dive into this, to escape these dangers, scuba divers must be properly trained, and scuba tanks often contain a special mix of compressed air that is up to 36% oxygen. And just to be sure, the recommended safe limit for diving is no more than 130 feet or 39 meters deep. Scuba gear and carefully diving can help you avoid these knots. Venturing going on the current technology becomes excessively dangerous. But for reference, oh, you have to fly beneath many eagle waters, and all of them require constant maintenance. <laughs> the Perdido oil supply is nearly 2,450 meters oh, long, and the oil rigs that exist there are the world's deepest. Uh, Remotely operated vehicles uh, uh, have to be used to keep on that advantage. Keep on mind. Even the best ROV operators are not going to be able to do this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. been invented to try to bridge the gap between saturation divers and ROVs, keeping the person inside at one atmosphere of pressure. But these suits are extremely heavy oh, and, and can only operate at a max depth of around 600 meters. If there is a way to remove the limitations that breathing air at depth imposes on the body, then humans could, in theory, dive much deeper than they currently can, as deep as the deepest oil rig, maybe even to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. But you can't remove the need to breathe from the equation, and you can't remove the immense pressure that exists at the bottom of the ocean. But what you can remove is the need to breathe air. Well, for the humans it is, but for the rats, that is not a special effect. It is actually breathing liquid. So if the rat can do it, can we? How far off from reality is this idea for humans? The idea of liquid still trying to figure out a way to make liquid breathing for deep sea diving a reality. One inventor thinks he has come up with a plan to make it possible. He proposes <laughs> Instead of breathing a compressed gas, the diver has to the oxygen in the However, this may not be just the case. The research is still going on and to adapt this to the dive. Dive marks are also Development is still underway. This camera has an underwater camera. We see everybody going diving without the need of it. It's just simply putting a small device in your mouth to breathe. But these are the very much to divide. Created by engineering student Thomas Winchip in his final year of Hello guys, welcome to Chop Hospitals. In today's video, we will talk about some amazing diving gadgets. So sit tight, Whoa. 
The purpose is on your fresh air system sets the power grid apart.